What's up folks, welcome back to the channel. Before we get this video started, uh, you're probably gonna hear me say cut, and I gotta stop because the image is getting too dark. I got the sun covered up by clouds and it might, it might come out, who knows? So I might have to do some, some adjustments with the camera, all right? What we have here is the Hybrid 50 as a clip-on thermal. If you follow me on IG, you've already seen the content. You see me sharing some of this uh, with a different setup. Um, we need to talk about this really quick. Um, my green AR, this is originally was on my green AR. This LPVO and this Hybrid 50 was on my green AR, the 18 inch barrel. I've already did a video on it. I triggered a bunch of people talking about it, it was my DMR and folks are like, that's not a DMR, it's an SPR. But anyways, uh, it was a badass gun. Um, after the, that hunt that I'm about to share with you guys, uh, I removed the suppressor and halfway uh, removing that suppressor, the, the suppressor mount just locked up on the on the threads. And uh, unfortunately, there was no other way to get that mount off. Uh, I just had to get it off of there, and it, it destroyed the threads. It's they call it thread galling. And uh, so that rifle's taken apart, and we have the PWS MK116 and 762 by 39 as a mock-up. We're using it as an example to share, to show you guys how it looks like on a rifle that's pretty average. This is probably the average length a lot of people use. Uh, again, this is a 16 inch rifle. As you can see, it takes up a lot of space up here, but it's pretty badass. I'm not going to lie. It's, it's worth the extra weight and the length on the platform. Okay, so let me go through some of this, uh, this entire setup that I have here optic wise. We're not going to talk about the rifle. Uh, we have a Vortex Razor Gen 3. Uh, this is a 1 to 10. Uh, first focal plane, EBR9 reticle. Absolutely love these things. This is my fifth one. I love them. They're on all my rigs whenever it comes to, uh, I'm just a big fan of LPVLs, but I have nothing but razors. I absolutely love these things. Uh, for In order for you to have this thing properly aligned with the Hybrid 50, you're going to have to run a tall mount, okay? I mentioned this before in my last video with the Hybrid 50, how high it sits you got to have that optic up there. So anyways, we have a Unity mount. This is a Unity fast mount at 2.05, 2.05 inches over the rail. That's the, that's, that gave me the perfect alignment here. You might be able to get away with a 175, a 19, who knows, I didn't try it. Uh, I just know that uh, the, two, the 205 is what gives me the proper alignment. Um, to the Hybrid 50, so um, as you guys can see, it does take up a lot of real estate here. Uh, from the end of my eyepiece here on the Razor to the front eyepiece of the objective on the Hybrid 50, we're at 19 inches, okay? And there, there goes that sun, so cut, cut. All right, if it does it again, screw it. <laughs> but 19 inches overall length up here. Uh, for you SBR guys, uh, that's probably gonna be a big problem. I mean, it takes up a lot of real estate on the platform, okay? Uh, in order for you to get it over in the clip-on mode, um, this is basic instructions that you can find online with your instruction manuals if you get it. Uh, but I'm gonna share it with you guys right here. Uh, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is turn your eyepiece out. So uh, most of the time we have the eyepiece turned in. I have a witness mark up here that isn't on this model. I'm not sure if the newer ones have a witness mark or not, but uh, right now I just hit it. So the witness mark, I have it turned out. And the reason I had that witness mark there is because with this LPVO and me turning it out, it gets the image sharp. It gives me a, a focused image, okay? Um, to get it over into uh, clip-on mode, you're gonna wanna hold your picture and recording button, the picture capture button, and your menu button at the same time and press it down. When you press those two down at the same time, it clicks over to clip-on mode. Something that I noticed immediately with this setup was how good the image was going up in magnification with the LPVO. Uh, if you watched the video on the RH25, um, and I, I, I briefly talked about it there, it was like you're stuck at three power. Uh, four power you might get away with, but three, three and a half power is the maximum magnification you wanna go on an RH25. With the Hybrid 50 folks, I went all the way up to 10 power, and by the time 
I got to 10 power, it started to get a little grainy, but it wasn't bad. I mean, I was still able to engage on steel because I was shooting some steel at 300 yards. I was still able to, to take those shots comfortably uh, with the 10 power all the way, you know, going up in maximum magnification on my LPVL. So that is badass. Uh, how did they make this work? How did, how did they figure that out? I made the phone call and I asked personally, I was like, hey, how did they get this image to stay so clear, although I'm going up in magnification on my LPVO and they're using half the resolution of the unit, half the resolution of the unit. So when you go over into clip on mode, you're gonna see it automatically shrink down in size. And that's what they did. They shrunk down the size. So you need to go up a little bit in your magnification to fill up the screen if you want to. Uh, once you get that figured out, it's time to collimate. It's time to get it uh, zeroed with your LPVO. One thing that I'm noticing online, and it's, it's, it's misleading to a lot of people, when they hear the word clip-on, they think they can just get a clip-on thermal, throw it in front of their LPVO or big optic, and think they that their zero is not compromised. They think that their point of impact is still gonna be the same. That is not true. Uh, as soon as you put a thermal clipped on in front of your day optic, you have to get the thing collimated and aligned. And it's not that hard. Uh, you just hit the menu button down. Uh, you'll see it if you own one. Uh, the first thing that's gonna pop up is gonna be a reticle with a small gun. You click on that and you're gonna get your X and Y. That X and Y is gonna allow you to move the screen just like the RH25 and get it to where you can get your point of impact uh, aligned with your uh, LPVO. So if you're one if you're one MOA at 100 yards, uh, and this is what I experienced as soon as I put it on in front as a, uh, as a clip on, I was six inches low and about three inches to the left. I had to make those adjustments with the screen uh, to get it aligned with my LPVO. So do not change the zero on your LPVO. You have those adjustments in the Hybrid 50. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Uh, I am that guy that that bad, I like to bad mouth new, uh, new things, new ideas. I hate on it before I try it. And, and this is, <laughs> it's been like this for a while. And I was knocking this, uh, I was like, it's, it's gonna be another RH25 and there's nothing wrong with the RH25. But the, the thing that I, I, the big issue that I ran into with the RH25 was limited with range. So uh, a lot of the, animals that we hunt are within 150 yards. Sometimes they're 50 yards and the RH25 was badass for that. But whenever it was time for me to take the longer shots, I wasn't comfortable because I couldn't go up into magnification with my optic. It started to get really grainy. So it had its limitations. With the Hybrid 50, like I said, going up in magnification was not an issue. Another thing that was really pleasant was how clear the image was. What you guys are about to see is exactly what I was looking through on my eyepiece. Another thing, you are not gonna see my reticle. So you're just gonna see this image without a reticle and you're gonna see the pigs dropping, but I am using the EBR9 reticle on the Vortex Razor. I'm not using it illuminated, I'm just using, uh, actually I am using it illuminated because I have a black reticle on here and I use black hot. So I have it set on like uh, level one uh, for the illumination, the center part of the EBR9 reticle, that is red and that's what I'm using to place my shots. So that's pretty much it. Everything else is just basic information that you can find online or in the manual. Uh, but I do wanna share this with you really quick. Uh, when you upload videos from the Hybrid 50, you're gonna get half that image. So uh, you're, I'm gonna share the first clip that I got. It was a bunch of pigs scattered out, uh, but uh, Chris found a bunch of pigs the previous night and he was like, hey, come out. So I went the next night with that setup and uh, we got really close, but there was a solo pig off to the left. You're gonna see footage with the uploaded size and I'm gonna share that with you so you can see how it uploads. And then the rest of the footage, I'm gonna crop it to fit the screen and I'm gonna probably throw my own audio in there because my own audio, the, the audio I got is way better than the audio off of the Hybrid 50. Although this is the best, this thing records the best audio out of all the iRay scopes that are available. This has the best audio, but uh, I want you guys to hear those thuds. I want you guys to hear those hits, but enough of me talking, let's get straight to the footage.
here, but he's not too pissed about it. No. Let's get the big one in the middle on the right. Okay? The big one right in the middle? Yeah, I got the one in the dead middle. Okay. Okay? Yep. Ready, Anthony? Yeah. Alright, three, two, one, boom. Three, two, one. There's one to the right of y'all. One to the right of y'all. Chris, you see him? Tree line. To the right of you. On the tree line. Keep going. Keep oh, he went into the trees. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Again, the rifle I was using was the green AR. I had the Otter Creek Labs Polonium on there. This optic and this hybrid 50. That's exactly how it was set up. I was using 223, the uh, 62 grain, the control K, the Lehigh projectiles. I love that stuff. Copper bullets, badass. It puts the hammer on them. Um, but folks, overall, I think it's a badass clip-on thermal, although it's big. Um, I just want to get this information out there. Uh, again, it's 19 inches from the objective to the eyepiece. Overall length with the heavy Vortex Razor, they're heavy. Mount, battery, and optic, you're looking at five and a half pounds on top of your platform. So you're gonna add some weight, but a lot of people are always curious about clip-ons. Clip-ons, clip-ons, clip-ons. Well, here it is. And this is what it's set up like, and this is how it performed, okay? Is it my number one choice? Is it gonna be better than all the other optics that I have? No, it's not. I still prefer a weapon-mounted optic. I still prefer this as a weapon-mounted optic, but it's so cool to see how it performed in the field, and it did extremely well. Whew. Uh, am I gonna use it again as a clip-on? Probably not. Uh, if I get that 223 running, I'll probably get some more footage up with that. Probably doing some varmint hunts. But overall, I still prefer it as a weapon mounted optic. And the main reason is because of the size. If it was a lot smaller, I'll probably use it a lot more as a, as a clip on. But uh, overall, I got two optics sitting up here. You know what I'm saying? And it's just, it's just a lot of rig up there. Man, this wind is picking up, folks. It is picking up big time. Anyways, enough of me talking. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I have a lot more content coming, guys. I have another AR that I just rebarreled in 6.5 Creedmoor. I want you guys to see that. We're gonna get that set up with a day optic. I've already hunted with it. I shared it over on IG. We have a new optic that's coming out. I wanna share with you guys. I wanna talk about the diligent suppressors. I wanna talk about trot. There's so much to talk about. I just gotta make that time. I gotta make it happen. But in the meantime, folks, I appreciate all the support. I appreciate your patience, and I will see you guys in the next video.